I'm Terry Sullivan along with Dave Drayson. Welcome back. Another edition of Big Time Memories coming at you today with a man I think belongs in the Mount Rushmore professional wrestling, Terry Funk. Oh, my Lord. Yeah, you're talking about one of the greats, you know, from uh, East Coast, West Coast, Japan. He yeah. made a name for himself all around the world. He has for a number of decades. I think he's a six-decade performer in the ring, six-decade athlete in the ring, and just one of the most fabulous uh, all-round athletes of all time. Oh, you see Terry Funk's name on the bill. You know, people come in droves and pay money to see him. He's right. still a draw yeah. and still can, you know, put it out there and give you, you know, some great wrestling. Former NWA World Heavyweight Champion back in the days when they were what we call a touring champion. Mm -hmm. They would go to an area of the country, maybe spend a week. They would wrestle every night and then fly to the next area of the country and do it all over again. Yep, but let's go from the beginning. Let's start. You know, uh, Terry Funk, born June 30th, 1944, but he was born in Illinois, not in Texas. You know, te you know he's known for being, you know, tex you know a Texan, but uh, his father, Dory Funk, and his brother, Dory Funk Jr., moved to Texas uh, when he was a young boy. Right. Uh, so, and they, you know, started, uh, you know, uh, the promotion down there, uh, Dory Funk Sr. was a big name. Uh, Dory Funk Jr. Uh, broke in. And uh, Terry Funk, he was like one of the f numerous alumni of West Texas State University. Besides Terry Funk, you had Dory Funk uh, Jr., you had Dusty Rhodes, you had Dick Murdoch, you had Tully Blanchard, you had Tito Santana, you had Bruiser Brody, oh, Stan yeah. Hansen, Ted DiBiase, uh, Bobby Duncan, uh, Manny Fernandez, yeah. and a host of others. It's you know, amazing. Yeah, amazing how many, you know, I mean, you know, Notre Dame doesn't, who, can you name one wrestler who came out of Notre Dame? You know, uh, University of Michigan, you had uh, Scott, uh, Steiner, Scott Steiner right. brothers, yeah. Right. But uh, yeah, uh, Terry, you know, coming out of there, played football, and he was destined to, you know, go into the family business of yeah. professional wrestling. Just a natural. He and his brother Dory, too. The, I never had the pleasure of watching Dory Sr. in action, but he was a top star for mm -hmm. uh, at least 20 or 30 years. Died after a wrestling match in Amarillo one night. But Dory and Terry were both two excellent practitioners of the craft of professional wrestling. Yeah, they learned their craft well. And Terry and was so versatile. I mean, he yep. could do, he could play any part in the ring. Good guy, bad guy, maniac, whatever you needed. He Terry did over his it. career, yeah. And he would excel, if not over excel. And Terry made his debut in Amarillo, Texas in 1965 against one of the another greats of professional wrestling, Sputnik Monroe, of all people. The sweet man, the original sweet man, Sputnik yeah. Monroe. Yeah. And, you know, I happen to, you know, as a young kid, go to St. Louis often, and I would see a young Terry Funk, you know, wrestling on the Keel shows. This would have been 1968, 1969, and Dory Funk Jr. would have been on those shows, and I remember seeing uh, Dory Sr. Sr. Yeah, on sure. those. And all three of I think I saw one match where all three of them were a tag team against uh, Gene Kaniski, Dr. Bill Miller, and ooh, one other person I can't remember offhand, but I did see all three of them in a tag team match there. And they had the Missouri State title, which was usually the precursor to the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. Mm -hmm. And that was, I think, one of Terry's very first titles. And I happened to run into Terry in 1973. I happened to, with the Sheik's blessing, I went out to Los Angeles uh, with Mike LaBelle's promotion, and I worked in the front office there for the summer of 73. And I remember one of the uh, matches there that they build up really big, uh, Terry Funk versus Victor Rivera. And I remember seeing Terry there. And many years later, it was almost 30 years later, I saw Terry Funk at a uh, California, uh, Cauliflower Alley Club uh, reunion in Las Vegas. And before I, you know, uh, 
I knew he was going to be there because he was the MC with J.J. Dillon for the banquet. And I thought, what a great present for me to bring to Terry Funk. And I printed all the pictures out that I took that night at the Olympic Auditorium of Terry Funk and Victor Rivera. And I handed it to him, and uh, he says, yeah, you're that kid from Detroit. You, you manage the Sheik. And you know, I said, yeah, yeah. So he knew who I was, and he was so appreciative of what I gave him. And he goes, oh, you must know my uncle. And I go, yeah. And the, his uncle was Jack Kane, who was a referee down uh, in Texas. And the Sheik brought him up as one of the bookers uh, back in the late 60s and early 70s right. for big yeah. time wrestling here. Yeah, one of the big success, uh, one of the most successful eras of big time. Yeah, and, but Terry Funk didn't make his debut in big time until 1977. And I was already gone at that time doing my managing career, but you were still around here. So right. you have, yeah. you know, front information of what Terry Funk's, you know, debut was here in big time. Well, we went through Dory's reign as a world champion in the early 70s. Terry a little bit later than that into the, oh, 73, 74, yeah. I think. But he came into Detroit in 77. The very first time he came in, it was to go against the Sheik. And I don't know if they had played some of the Japan tapes at that point in time, Sheik and Butcher against the Funks or not. But Terry Funk came in uh, and wrestled the Sheik, won by disqualification. Can you believe that? Terry Funk, the Sheik disqualified? No. Can you that, believe that? I... And he had several appearances then over 77 and 78. Uh, Russell, he and Dory came in for a series of matches against the Sheik and the Butcher. In fact, the last match that I have record of Terry appearing at in Kobo was in 1980. He and Dory against the Sheik and the Butcher inside a cage. Wow, that had to be a wild one. <laughs> and uh, Terry also had some numerous matches with Mark Lewin here in Detroit. Terry was not a fan favorite at that point in time and was not necessarily a favorite of one of the commentators at that point in time. He was uh, quite a difficult guy to get along with. And one day when I was interviewing him on Big Time Wrestling, I think it was a live show mm -hmm. at Channel 62 here in Detroit. And Terry was Upset. in a mood. Oh, in a mood, yeah. yeah he was say. in a mood and he was felt like he was being disrespected by the promotion, by Mark Lewin and by the announcer, and he says, tell him I'm the best wrestler in the world. And I said, well, beyond a shadow of a doubt, you're one of the best wrestlers in the world. You know, you tell him that I am the best wrestler in the world. And this went on three or four times, and finally, it's like, dude, I am not going to say you're the best wrestler in the world. And that's the last thing I remembered. Knocked me out. Oh, he snapped. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I would probably do the same thing if you yeah. didn't say I was the greatest wrestling manager <laughs> in the world. <laughs> and I wish tape still existed, but that was recorded over uh, about four weeks later, never to be seen again. You know, and over, you know, Terry Funk's career, he changed personas, you know, all the time. Right. I remember him being, what, Chainsaw Charlie? Chainsaw at one? Charlie in WWE, right. He had some numerous matches against Cactus Jack then. Mm -hmm. he, was, uh, he was a commentator for a while in WCW, and, you know, his, his, he was sort of retired from being on the road every night, but then he morphed, morphed from being a commentator into being a challenger for Ric Flair in WCW, and they, that led up to one of the most memorable matches, in my opinion, of all time, the I Quit match on television between Terry Funk and Ric Flair. I remember also that Terry Funk went into the Memphis territory, That's right. or as Jimmy Valiant would say, Mempho. Mempho, yeah. yeah. And he had some wild brawls with uh, Jerry Lawler. There's some classics there. The, uh, the empty arena match, oh. which was Terry's idea, is, uh, is out there on YouTube, as is uh, several interviews that Terry did in, in Memphis with Lance Russell, your friend yep. Lance Russell, the commentator there. 
and uh, some really, really good stuff there. Oh, God, those were some wild tapes to watch. If you wrestling fans go on YouTube and just uh, type in Terry Funk, you're going to come up with a whole array of different kind of styles and matches. His Cactus Jack matches, the yeah. Jerry Lawler matches, the Abdullah the Butcher matches, the Sheik matches, just all classics. And Terry later in his career morphed into a, what we would term the hardcore wrestler. And a lot of the stuff you see out there on, on YouTube is going to be involved barbed wire and fire with Sabu, with Onita from Japan, with the Sheik. There's a lot of good uh, video out there. You know, coming, you know, when he was came out of wrestling, you know, for from uh, West Texas State. He was a clean cut, good looking guy, yeah. you know, uh, and morphed into this maniac, uh, just a man of too many personas, but, you know, a, an icon of professional wrestling. And an all round performer who also made his mark in movies. Yes, yes. He absolutely did. Uh, Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze, yeah. Paradise Alley. He also, I hate to use the word choreographed, but he laid out the moves for the fight scene in Rocky V. Yes. And remains a good friend with Sylvester Stallone, who he starred with in Paradise Alley. Oh, I always enjoyed Beyond the Mat. Yeah, oh, oh sure. Oh, God, yeah, what a absolutely. great wrestling movie that was. Yeah. You know, so he had, a, you know, a career in uh, wrestling, you know, uh, movies, and wait, what was the name of the ranch? that he inherited with his from his father. The Double Cross. The Double, Double Cross, Cross Ranch, Ranch in Amarillo, Texas. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, as customary, Terry, can you take us and give the fans one last introduction of the great Terry Funk? I will. And Terry is active on Twitter at Dirty Funker. You can find him on Twitter. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Double Cross Ranch in Amarillo, Texas, Weighing 245 pounds, Terry Funk. proud to say that I'm a part of IBW. I take pride in IBW that we are a family-run company. It's a fight. It's a sport. Our IBW tradition has always mattered. You're going to see world-class professional big-time wrestling at its best. This ain't no sports entertainment. This is professional wrestling. International big-time wrestling's The Fix. Each and every week, your fix of IBW action. You want entertainment? Look no further than Rocks TV. International Big Time Wrestling! Wrestling fans, if you like what you've seen, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and also don't forget to ring that bell.